Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShop Pro video. So the other day, I received a poster from a friend. It was one of those old Star Wars, The Last Jedi. And I was kind of looking at it and realizing that it's, it has a pretty neat effect on it with the whole um, figures of the main characters and the, the red clothing and sort of the painterly style, both in the background and in the front. So I thought, hey, this would make a pretty cool tutorial. So I'm going to cover how we can replicate this capability in PaintShop Pro, starting with a stock photo. So the first thing I want to cover is image selection. And just because it's kind of important when you think about it, the image you start with is going to have a pretty big impact in how much work you're going to end up doing. And so looking at the stock photo that I have, the big thing is the main character or the subject is wearing dark clothes, has dark hair, and that's pretty good in terms of contrast to the low depth of field or the blurry background, which is also a lot brighter. So what this gives for us is a much easier time of uh, using the background eraser to separate him, which is the first thing that we're going to do. So to isolate him, I'm just going to use a regular brush um, with the background eraser and just carefully go along the edges to create that initial separation with the background. There will be some cleanup um, afterward with the regular eraser and ultimately I'll use the lasso tool selection to be able to get rid of all the rest after we have a nice bit of clearance around him initially. So now that we have him isolated, the next thing is just to crop it to some kind of dimension that is a little bit more in line with the original poster. And it's pretty tight on the sides and they bring it down pretty close uh, on the head. They seem to always cut the head off. So we'll just mimic the same things in our composition. It would be nicer if his body were a little bit longer or that they showed a little bit more in the stock photo because then we'll have more room to do the blending effect at the bottom. But this will work for what we're trying to just um, try. So at this stage, now what we want to do is create some isolation between the shirt and the head. So to do that, we'll duplicate the original image and on the top layer, we'll colorize it since we're already going to need to make the shirt red, uh, that nice rich red that you see in the poster. Um, we'll do that first so it'll help us be able to identify where the line is to uh, erase the head using just the normal eraser. That way we'll have the shirt on one layer only, no head, and then the background layer will just be the head and the original color shirt, but we'll also erase that shirt on the head layer because we'll need to be able to do some masking at the bottom and it just makes it a lot easier if that shirt is gone. So then we end up with just two layers, one with the head only and one with the shirt only. So now that we've isolated the head and the shirt, we can start applying some contrast to mimic the look of the poster and focusing first on the shirt only, uh, I'm going to use curves and really just uh, increase the contrast essentially. That's what we're trying to do is make the darks pretty dark and make the lights really highly saturated, really bright red. And for the head, we're going to do a series of contrast tools and a lot of it is experimentation. But what, what I ended up settling with was um, using curves initially then chasing that with a little, with a very little bit of tone mapping and an even smaller amount of clarify. And a lot of it's just to get sort of a little bit of, of grit and, and uh, a definition in there that wasn't already there, but trying not to go too overboard because looking at the original pictures, it's not extreme. The lighting is a little bit different. They have sort of a side lighting effect going on and this is a much more diffused look. So. We can't achieve exactly the same thing, but we just want it to kind of blend in at least with the level of contrast that we applied with the shirt. As a final touch up, I did a little bit of burning with uh, the burn brush um, just to darken the hair a little bit so that it created a little bit more contrast with the background in that area. Um, and you'll see how we're going to emphasize that contrast as well by highlighting the background just in the head area. So now moving on to the background. Really to create this effect, one could use art media brushes or this could be done in another program like Corel Painter or Autodesk Sketchbook. Um, any of those things that can create a painterly effect. I'm trying to do this all in PaintShop Pro, but art media just isn't as responsive as I would like to be and just doesn't create the, the texture that I'm looking for. So essentially, I downloaded a bunch of painter brushes um, from a Brush Easy website 
and that's what I'm using uh, to, to stamp essentially all over the background to create that texture and just using different levels of gray uh, to, to get some variation. And what you'll see is that I'm using many different kinds of brushes and always keeping the orientation up and down just to you know have some consistency like as if the brush strokes are are always being painted up and down this isn't really mimicking exactly what the brush strokes look like in the poster this is just uh, my own take on it and and really just experimenting with it to come up with something that generally speaking that i like so as i mentioned before to kind of finalize the background um, adding a little bit of lighter paint just around the head, just, just to create that contrast and emphasis um, to direct the viewer's eyes, at least in that direction. Um, apart from the fact that there'll probably be a title at the end, but, but really just the whole darkened hair and the lightened background to place emphasis in that part of the picture. So now that we've got the background finished, the next phase is to add paintbrush layers on top of the subject. And there's a few elements to this. One element, if you look closely at the original pictures, is that there are red brush strokes over the red clothing. And I think it just gives some texture and it kind of blends just the whole idea of the painterly effect in. So we'll add some red brush strokes. Then next, I'll create a mask layer on top of the red shirt and the idea here is then to use a black colored brush and the idea is essentially is to erase his shirt so that it starts to blend in from a, a painterly point of view so some of that light gray then begins to show as we blend up from the bottom and give it that brush texture the final step is to just add another layer um, no masking nothing just adding paint brush strokes on top um, to just finalize that bottom paint brush layer blend to blend into the character but also into the background. So you'll see that I use a few layers and vary the opacity just to get that blend to be consistent. Keep in mind that just as much as you can use a brush to paint color on or mask or anything like that, um, you can always use the erase or you can use the inverse color with the same kind of brush to do to remove what you've painted. So if you painted too much or you intentionally paint far just to bring it back and maintain that texture, you can always do the opposite, whether it's erasing or using a white on a mask, for example. And that essentially is the final step of processing the image. So now that we've essentially completed the artistic elements of the picture, you can see it has all the main points. The final thing that could be done is adding the logo, if that's what you're really going for, ultimately in the end. Um, so you could just grab a Star Wars logo, remove any of the extra background parts of it and so that just the text remains. And there you have it. There is a replication of the Last Jedi poster. Um, it's not exactly the same. The brush strokes really are probably the key difference, I'd say, as well as the lighting on the subject. But um, this is essentially a way that you could do it in PaintShop Pro. I hope you've learned at least a little bit about, you know, the process of compositing and how to combine different elements using um, brushes that have already been created to create sort of painterly textures and just making good use of layers. I'm happy with the result. I think it actually looks pretty cool. And that's it for this one. I hope this has helped elevate your creative capacity in some way, shape, or form. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you um, are interested in being notified of new content, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time.